In this video, we're going to learn how to create webhooks using your Shopify apps. Stay tuned for that. Now, first of all, I just want to mention this, but I know what you're thinking. What the hell happened to my hair? Now I look like someone who goes to the gym every single day. Well, the thing is, I want to try something new. I want to try to make myself look like mature because I look like a high school boy in my previous videos. No. So what are webhooks? So webhooks are something that you use for receiving data, retrieving data, or storing data from a certain event. Most of the time, I use webhooks for deleting merchants' data when they uninstall my app. Think of it like a notification. Say for example, you like this video and then I receive a response that you like my video. And then you comment down below, oh, you look like Dwayne. What did you say, punk? And then I reply to you, thanks. And then you receive a notification that I responded to your comment. <laughs> You serious? So webhooks are kind of like that. You will receive or your server will receive a notification when someone created or say for example, do a certain event. Now, how do you create webhooks? Creating webhooks is honestly very, very easy. In fact, you only need two things, topics or events and your URL address or address. Why did I say address? It's just the same, URL address and address. So what are those topics or events? Well, topics or events are something that you specify in your webhooks. When you create a webhook, you you have to specify that. Now, there are a lot of events that you can use for your webhooks. There are the events like collections create, collections delete, orders create, orders delete, draft orders create, draft orders delete, and so on. If you're interested to learn all of the events that you can use for your webhooks, I'll put all the links that you need in the description below. Feel free to check them out. All right, so I think I have explained webhooks. We can now finally, we can finally start creating the app. So let's go. All right, so we're here in my Shopify app. This is the same Shopify app that we created in the previous video, you know, the how to design Shopify apps without using Polaris. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this table and replace that with, with webhooks response. So let's do that. Let's open VS Code. And we should have here the index.php and I'm going to replace this with webhooks.php. And I'm going to create that file. So I'll create a new file. I'm going to call this webhooks that PHP. And of course, I'm going to save this. Sorry about that. Save that. Here, I'm going to create PHP tag. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to create a new webhook variable. So webhooks, and I'm going to use the Shopify, Shopify call function. And first is the access token, access token. Next is the shop URL. So shop underscore URL. So I'm getting all of these variables from index.php, so access token, and then shop URL. We don't need to create that same variable because, yeah, we're just referencing the webhooks PHP in here. So all we need is just to um, get the variables. And next argument is the um, endpoint. So I'll just use admin slash API slash 2021 hyphen 2021 hyphen 01 slash webhooks that PHP, not PHP, um, JSON. And the next argument is an array. So I'm going to create an array here. And then I'm going to um, use the post method. There you go. And then I'm going to create the same variable. I'm going to use the JSON decode. And we're going to decode the response. So webhooks response. And I'll set this to true. There you go. And that with semicolon, I'm going to create the array. So array, and then it's going to be, of course, an array. And first key is the webhook. And then it's going to be two-dimensional array. So inside is an array. And then first is the topic. And then you can just leave it, leave it empty. And second is the address. Address. Not your vocation, okay? It's different. <laughs> Jokes, haha, <laughs> funny. And then next is the the response, I think. Let's open the webhooks uh, page. And we should have here the, the example. Let's just scroll down for a little bit. And I'm going to use the post and the format. All right, so format JSON. Awesome, so format and the value is JSON. Let me just double check. Webhook, 
webhook, topic, topic, address, and address, and format, JSON. All right, we're done. All right, so for the topic, we're going to use products slash create. Let me just double check. Let's scroll back up. Uh, we should have here the, uh, all right, so product event, products create. So that's what I'm going to use. Awesome. So products create. And for the address, I'm going to um, use the Angular URL. But you know what? I'm going to create a constant variable. So I'll use define. And I'll call this Shopify. You know what? Not Shopify, but instead domain URL project path. That's pretty long. And then the value is the Angrok URL. Just copy this, paste it in here, and I'll just add the Shopify folder and then webhooker. If you're not sure what this is all about, this is the Angrok URL, and this is my folder for my projects. And this is my web hooker um, full folder for this specific project. And we can just close this with another slash. And then we can just end it with semicolon. And here we can just concatenate the domain project path. And then concatenate the webhooks folder, webhooks slash products slash create.php. And then we're going to create that folder. So here in our webhooker project folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this webhooks. And then inside of this folder, I'm going, I'm going to create a new, I'm going to create a new folder, and that is the products folder. And inside of this products folder, I'm going to create a new file, and that is the create.php. And here we can finally start receiving the response. So I'll just open the PHP tag. And first I'm going to define the secret key. So define. And this is going to be called Shopify app secret key. And then I'm going to copy the secret key from token.php, shared secret. I just copy this and then paste it here. So end it with semicolon. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is to verify the merchant. So we can just create a new function in here. I'm going to call this verify request. And then the first parameter that we're going to require is the um, data. And then the second is the HMAC. So we can just type here HMAC. And inside of this, we're going to create a new variable. I'm going to call this verify HMAC, verify underscore HMAC. And we're going to use the function called base64 encode. So base64 encode function is a built-in function of PHP, which is used to encode a data into a base64 MIME. So MIME stands for... My, 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 my so we can just use base64 encode. And what we're going to pass here is a hash. So we're going to use the hash underscore HMAC. All right, so there are four parameters that we're going to pass here. First, the algorithm or the HMAC algorithm. Next is the data. Next is the secret key. And last is the raw output. So we can just pass the... We're going to use the SHA-256, I believe. And the second parameter is the data. So I'm going to use the data variable. And last is the... And next is the secret key. So I'll just use the Shopify app secret key. And next is, lastly, is the raw output. So I'll just set this to true because that is a Boolean value. All right, so end that with semicolon. And next we're going to return, we're going to return a Boolean value. So I'm going to verify if our HMAC value is equal to the value of verify HMAC. So I'm going to use the function called HMAC, I think it's hash equal. Yeah, hash equals. And the first argument is our HMAC, so type HMAC. The second argument is the verify HMAC. And just end it with semicolon. All right, we're done. So the next thing we're going to do is start processing the response. So first, I want to get the HMAC. So I'll create a new variable in here. I'll call this my HMAC. And we're going to get that HMAC from server. And then the key is, I believe it's the um, at Shopify HMAC SHA-256. So just copy that and just paste it here. And that with semicolon. Then the next thing we're going to do is just to get all of the headers. So to do that, we're going to create a new variable. I'm going to call this data or data. 
and I'm going to use the function called file get contents. So just type file underscore get contents, and then we're going to use the um, input stream, and that is the um, PHP, I think PHP, and then colon, double slash, and then input, and end that with semicolon. And since the response of file get contents is a string, I'm going to um, encode that into a UTF format. So I'll just create a new variable in here. I'll call this UTF18, or UTF8, not 18, UTF8. And I'm going to use the function called UTF8 encode. And I'm going to pass the string, so it should be the data, or data. And then next I'm going to decode this into a JSON. So I'll just create a new variable, I'll call this data JSON. And I'm going to use the JSON decode, of course. And then I'm going to pass the UTF8. And I'm going to set this to true because this is going to be an associated array. So end up with semicolon. And then the next thing we're going to do is just to verify our merchant. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'll call this verify underscore merchant. And I'll use the verify request function. And I'll pass the my HMAC variable. So it should be my HMAC. And then the second argument is the... No, it's supposed to be the data first. So first is the data. So I'll just use here the data. And then next is the HMAC, so my HMAC. And that with semicolon. And then what we're going to do is just to check that. So if verify merchant is true, then what I'm going to do is just to create a new variable. I'm going to call this response. Make sure that it's empty. And in this if statement, I'm going to use that variable. So response is equal to uh, data JSON. And that with semicolon, otherwise, I'm going to give this a value of this is not from Shopify. So that means, um, that means this is not a Shopify merchant. Stop. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to type something else. Um, you know what? Let's continue. And the next thing we're going to do is just to create a new file. Now, since I'm using SAMP, I don't have a server. What I'm going to do is just to create a file. So I'm going to use the function called fopen. And I'm going to create the file name. So instead of just typing log.txt, instead I'm going to use the domain. So I'll create a new variable in here. I'll use this, I'll call this shop domain. And I'll give this a value which is coming from the server. And the key is the Shopify domain. So I'll just type here x underscore Shopify underscore. You know what? There you go. x Shopify shop domain. And that with semicolon. And next is I'll just concatenate the shop domain here and remove the log, just leave the txt. You know, instead of text, I'll use JSON. And then the mode, I'll set this to W. And then after that, I'll set the or die. Cannot open or create this file. And that with semicolon, I'm going to create a variable here and should be log. And the value, the response will be passed to this variable. And then I'm going to pass the value of response to this file. So I'm going to use the function called fwrite. And the file is the log. And then the value is the response. And that with semicolon. And lastly, we need to close the file. So f close. And then that is the, uh, the log. And that with semicolon. All right, so I think we're good. So we can just save that. And let's go back to webhooks.php. We can just save this. All right, so we got an error. We forgot semicolon in here. Make sure you don't forget that. Save it again. And let's just double check. We have the domain project path. We have an array. And we have the Shopify call. We're using the endpoint. And we just need to echo out the response. So echo print r and use the webhooks variable. And that with semicolon, hit save. And let's open our app and hit refresh. And there you go, now we have the following webhook response. So we have created a webhook and its ID is the nine, the following ID, I'm not gonna read that. And the address is the following. So webhooks products create.php, that's good. And we're using the topic or event products create and it's created at 
2021. I'm not going to read it, obviously. So, yeah, this is the response. And the next thing we're going to do is just to create the product. So let's open the products page. And let's do that. Let's open this page. And I'm going to add a new product. Let's create that. And there we go. Now we have created the example Shopify product. Let's open our VS Code. And let's just check the webhooks products folder. As you can see, we have the following JSON file. All right, so this is not coming from Shopify. So we have an error. Let's just double check that. Here in our create.php, I don't think x Shopify HMAC shot 256. I think this is all supposed to be uppercase. So Shopify HMAC and then sha. Oh, no, no, no. It's supposed to be underscore, not hyphen. Yeah, I forgot about that. So make sure that you're using underscore, not hyphen. X underscore Shopify underscore HMAC underscore SHA256. And then the next is the domain. So X underscore Shopify. Supposed to be uppercase. So Shopify. And it's going to be an underscore shop underscore. Hit save. Let's just delete this JSON file. We don't need that. All right, so let's try it again. Let's open our app. Not the app, but instead the products. I'm going to create a new product. So click Add Product button. I'll just call this example product again. I'll give it a description of, you know what? This one should work. Hit Save. There we go, the product's created. Let's go back to VS Code. And the JSON is still not working. This is not from Shopify. All right, so let me just scroll down and check everything. I think everything is good. So HMAC server, oh yeah. I forgot the HTTP. <laughs> HTTPX, let's just copy that paste it to the other one as well. So HTTPX Shopify shop domain. HTTPX Shopify HMAC SHA256. This one, I swear to God, this, uh, this one should work. Save that. Let's delete this JSON file again. Move to recycle bin. There you go. Let's try it again. I swear to God. Create a new product. All right, so let's try it again. Example Shopify golden product. Why do you forget the HTTP? <laughs> it's save, but at least it's creating the file. That means the webhook is it's working. And there we go. So let's open VS Code. And there we go. Finally, example development store that my Shopify.com. And we don't have the JSON. What is going on? All right, so everything is fine. We have the response. Oh, the reason why it's because it's being decoded as an array. So we need to encode this into a JSON format. So JSON underscore encode. So I'll just close that. Hit save. And let's try it again. Create a new product. And I'll call this how to create webhooks. Yes. 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 I love Resident Evil Village. Thick. <laughs> All right, so let's open VS Code, and this time it should work. And there you go. Now we have the following JSON response. So we got the ID, the title, how to create webhooks, and the body HTML. And we have the vendor, product type. And there we go. Now we have created webhooks using your Shopify app, using PHP. Now, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer all of your questions. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Shopify app development related videos. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.